Hello everyone, my name is Clyde, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the Sun Yat-sen, which is a tier 9 battleship that has joined the Pan-Asian tech tree or the Pan-Asian nation, I suppose, in World of Warships. In the interest of full disclosure, Wargaming did give me this ship in the hopes that I would make this review, and here we are. So how do you get a Sun Yat-sen? Well, the best way to get it is to go to work and get yourself a paycheck, and then you'll be able to buy one for doubloons. So far, the ship is only available for doubloons, and it costs 19,300 of those little bad boys. Now, there is, of course, also an Admiral pack, which is more expensive and comes with a bunch of extra stuff, but that's really just for fancy lads and ladies. So if you're a fancy lad or lady, I guess you could buy the Admiral pack. Uh, for the rest of us, though, 19,300 doubloons is about 77 US dollars, and I'll put the price up for the Admiral pack as well for anybody who has more money than they know what to do with. <laughs> uh, there's another way, of course, you can get your greasy little mitts on an SYS, and that's by going over to the Clyde Plays Discord and entering to win one. We'll give one away about a week after this video goes live, and so you can go over there, and we've got a little channel called Hashtag Giveaways. You can jump into the Giveaways channel and enter to win for absolutely free, but you gotta join the Discord. Maybe you're not a Discord person, that's fine. You don't have to join it, but if you do, you could possibly win this premium battleship. For those who are new to the Hot Take series, you might be asking, what's a Hot Take? Well, Hot Takes is basically a, a series where I take a look at new ships that are coming to World of Warships, and for each Hot Take video, we take, I've said Hot Take a lot, but for each one of these videos, we take a look at the ship's capabilities, we compare them against its peers, ships of the same class and tier. We rate the ships on a scale of zero to five, with five being the best, zero being absolutely terrible, and three being kind of average. Sounds simple enough? All right, let's get to work. So what is Sun Yat-sen's deal anyway? Well, essentially she's a pan-Asian variant of the tier nine Soviet battleship Sovetsky Soyuz. Now, whereas Soyuz has nine 406 millimeter guns, SYS is packed with six 457 millimeter guns. She's kind of like a Georgia in that way. The dispersion's sort of similar. We'll talk a little bit more about this a little bit later. Although she doesn't have the speed boost, so she doesn't have the ability to dive like a Georgia does. And the secondaries don't quite match up either. Again, more on this a little bit later, but that's kind of what she's all about a small number of really big guns at tier 9, which is somewhat special. When we take a look at the consumables for Sun Yat-sen, they start off pretty typical. She's got damage control party, she's got hull repair, and then she's got this defensive AA fire, which is relatively rare among battleships. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we speak about the anti-aircraft capabilities of this ship. For the hull repair, as I've built her, she's got five charges. That is somewhat buffed, of course, and she has 404 hit points per second. If you throw on the India Delta signal, that jumps to 485, which puts her on par with most tier nine battleships. Not as good as the best ones, but better than some of the uh, weaker repair parties that are at this tier. Unlike the Soyuz, the ship upon which she is based, her damage control parties are not limited. So as long as you survive the uh, the reload time, the cooldown time, you can continuously use DCPs for the entire match, whereas Soyuz has a limited number of uses. As has been happening a lot of late, Wargaming has provided us with another monochromatic camouflage. This one's basically gray, which is not a very exciting color, although there is a little bit of blue mixed in with this, so she's not exactly just a straight old navy ship gray. Um, and she is relatively rust free. So if you're looking for positives, that's it. We do have some uh, Chinese characters here on the side, which is pretty slick. Um, but at the end of the day, this is not the most exciting camouflage. If you wanted to spruce it up, of course, you could go into the exterior. You would notice immediately there's not an alternative uh, color scheme for this one. I don't believe that's available for Pan Asian battleships. Um, if it is, let me know in the comments what I've done wrong. Uh, but you can also, of course, slap a consumable camouflage on here if you wish. But as far as permanents go, it's fairly black. Land. One quick note about this particular video, uh, Wargaming dropped the NDA on Sun Yat-sen rather suddenly. So rather than me having a video all ready to go to drop on NDA day, I wasn't ready. <laughs> and so this ship is already out. You guys might have seen me play it on stream over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Live, or also uh, watched other streamers play it or even seen other videos on YouTube. Some of you might already have this ship. Uh, you either wailed into it or actually they also gave you a chance to win it from Amazon Prime Gaming. I'll put the link in the description below if you haven't claimed your Amazon Prime prize already. So in the interest of saving me time in making this video and you time in watching it, I'm going to limit each category description to three sentences of description and then one bonus sentence of me telling you guys what score I'm assigning the ship for that category. This is going to be a challenge for me because I am somewhat wordy but basically we're doing this one in turbo time. It would be very easy to compare the guns on Sun Yat-sen to those on Georgia. Semicolon, open parentheses, yes I'm already cheating, close parentheses, 
Both ships have six 457 millimeter guns, a 22.9 second main battery reload if you build for that, and nearly identical dispersion, period. Georgia has almost double the secondary gun power, however, because Sun Yat-sen's secondary armament is actually pretty anemic. There were times when I really loved FYS's main battery, and you'll land some incredible citadels with these guns, but they are somewhat inconsistent with overpens being relatively common when you're firing at any kind of target. I'm gonna score the main battery on SYS a three because the guns are good when they're good and they're bad when they're bad. Sun Yat-sen is ninth out of 31 tier nine battleships when it comes to hit points, and she has decent armor, at least when she's bow in to enemy ships. I found myself wanting to get my back turret into the mix in order to be able to put all six shells down range, but doing this exposes her side to your enemies, and some of them are gonna take advantage of that weaker side armor. Sun Yat-sen's concealment is nothing to write home about either, so you'll want to use islands to isolate yourself from fighting too many ships at once whenever you can. For survivability and concealment, I'm going to give SYS a 3. Sun Yat-sen's AA DPS is rather low, honestly, but she is one of only three battleships at Tier 9 that has a defensive AA module. She does get three uses of that def AA module, and that boosts her AA DPS by 150%. I recommend that you plan to use all three of them, just like I used all three of the sentences that I allowed myself to speak about this category. I'm going to give Sun Yat-sen a 3 for anti-aircraft capability. Sun Yat-sen's ASW airstrike is exceedingly average. She has the exact same range, depth charge count, and damage as Georgia, Iwami, Izumo, Iowa, Soyuz, and probably most of the other tier 9 battleships as well, open parentheses, with the exception of Jean Bart and Musashi, which got nerfed by having really short ASW ranges, close parentheses. Boringly, I am going to give SYS a 3 in this category as well. Sun Yat-sen doesn't really get around very well, so for maneuverability, eh, she's probably not going to score too great. Uh, SYS is the 27th ship out of 31 when it comes to top speed, and although her rudder shift is tied with Soyuz for second best, her turning radius is 25th out of all tier 9 battleships, so it's like you turn the rudder really fast, but who cares, because your turning circle is enormous. Anyway, I'm gonna give SYS a two for maneuverability. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you choose where you wanna be correctly the first time, and it can be difficult to uh, get out of danger. SYS is really easy to play because the ship is a blunt instrument semicolon. There's nothing complicated to figure out or to learn how to do. She doesn't have Georgia's speed boost, which can actually be a death sentence to those who misuse it, but she also doesn't have any sensors, she doesn't have any secondaries to speak of, and she doesn't have any torpedoes, she's just a battering ram. The trickiest thing you have to sort out with SYS is when to hold your shots to reduce the chances of dispersion ruining your shots, and maybe, if you do it a bunch of times, your whole game. I'm going to give SYS a 3 for ease of play because while she is simple, she doesn't make it easy for you to make big plays, and there's also like no special sauce that enhances your game impact either. You've got to earn everything all on your own. When it comes to fun, Sun Yat-sen was really hot or cold for me, semicolon. I had some really fun matches in this ship, lots of pizza parties and huge salvos, not all of which, of course, I was lucky enough to have recorded. I also had some games where I was getting consistent overpens with salvos of about 2600 damage just over and over and over again and this was really frustrating i will say that when the 457s are working they are fantastic semicolon and with musashi and georgia no longer readily available this is the only tier 9 457 millimeter battleship that you can get in the game and 457 millimeter battleships are really fun at tier 9. For the fun category, I'm going to give SYS a 4 because I'm choosing to only remember the good times, but let it be known, some games she's going to feel like a 3 or maybe even a 2. Will the SYS become a staple of competitive modes? I mean, no, I don't think so. Not only because tier 9s are not a tier that gets a lot of competitive play, but I just think that people are going to trot out their Georges, their Jumbarts, their Iowas, Duncans, Awamis even, before they bring out this ship. Um, I'm going to rate her a 2 in this category because I do think she could still be fun in ranked, but I recognize, of course, that ranked is the least competitive of anything that we could even barely describe as a competitive mode. 
for my commander build, I've gone with a fairly standard survivability tanky build. Now, I went with gun feeder because with a 22.9 second reload, I can swap between my HE and my AP shells relatively quickly, as long as they're already loaded, and that, I think, is fantastic. Now, you could go with emergency repair specialist. A 3% improvement on either DCP or hull repair is going to enhance the return rate of those, the cooldown time, by about 2.4 seconds. And I just felt like being able to swap shells to a more efficient shell type was worth more than that 2.4 seconds for those two uh, consumables. I've gone with uh, Grease the Gears, although for a while I tried Vigilance. I don't usually run Vigilance on anything and I wanted to experiment with it. I think Grease the Gears is probably the way to go. This saves you about seven seconds on your turret rotation, which seems important to me, especially if I'm trying to get that back turret in play, which of course is a risky play and you want to shorten that time as much as you can. We've got uh, Adrenaline Rush just to get your guns reloading faster as you take damage. Basics of survivability is going to put the fires and floods out and get your modules back online faster. Emergency repair expert gives you an extra consumable of uh, hull repair, which is great. And of course, increases the action time by 10% on both DCP and hull repair. Concealment expert is going to keep me sneaky. I think some players might not go for concealment expert on a ship like this. It only brings it down to 13.5 kilometers. But if I can go dark under any circumstances, I'm going to want to be able to do that. And then, of course, uh, fire prevention. This is going to be a big, slow battleship that doesn't move very fast. And if you find yourself caught out and being flamed by like a Nevsky or a Haragumo, you're going to want as few of fires on you as possible. No surprises for upgrades either. We've gone with main armaments modification, which makes a lot of sense for a battleship. Damage control system modification one to just enhance the tankiness of this build. Uh, aiming systems modification is going to help with the dispersion on these shells, which is decent, but with a six gun battleship, you want all of the accuracy that you can muster. This is part of that recipe. We've gone with damage control system modification two, again, reducing the effect of fires and floods. I've gone with concealment modification here. I mean, you could go with torpedo lookout or something, but I just, I don't, I have a hard time not choosing concealment in this slot for any ship type. And Sunyat Sen here is no exception. And then I've gone for main battery modification three. This saves us 12% on our reload time. And that's part of how we get down to that 22.9 second main battery reload. You could go for more range, but with six shells uh, being all you can send down range, I feel like that's just a recipe for dispersion originated heartache. So those are my upgrades for the SYS. What do you think of this ship? Is this something you're going to rush out and buy? Did you already buy one? Uh, I think if it were me, I would probably wait and try to get this out of a Santa crate uh, next uh, holiday season. Uh, because I just don't think that I'd want to rush out and hand Wargaming 77 bucks or, or heaven forbid, buy the Admiral pack right now. I think if I did get one out of a Santa crate or some other random box, I'd be really excited about it because the ship is kind of fun, uh, but I don't know that it's something I need to go and pay, you know, a bunch of money for. Of course, one other way you could get the ship is you could swing by the Clyde Plays Discord and enter to win one in our giveaways channel. We're going to give that away about a week after this video has come live. So if you're watching this after that, sorry, the ship has already sailed. But uh, if you're not, if you're watching it early, you might have a chance to win this ship. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you had a great time. Hit the subscribe button. Maybe come hang out with us over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Live. It's always a pleasure to have you guys watching the videos and, and, and engaging with you guys in the comments. So hit me up down below with questions, comments, or thoughts on the SYS or pretty much anything else, and I will try to get back to you. Until we see you again in either the next video or the next Twitch stream, I hope you guys have a fantastic time, and we'll see you in the next Battle Captains. Take care of each other. Be cool and be nice. Bye. Whereas the Soyuz has nine 406 millimeter guns. What is this boat called? <laughs>